Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a videographer which got me thinking about various art mediums. What are art mediums, why are they important, and why should an entrepreneur care? There are many types of art mediums. The most traditional fall in four categories, drawing, painting, sculpting, and photography. Drawing is the oldest form of art. And I would venture to say almost every one of us has experience in this medium. I envision myself in lectures drawing on my notepad when I should have been paying attention about the Pythagorean theorem, which admittedly I have never used in my life outside of school. Pencils, ink, crayons, markers, and chalk are all various mediums that one can use to draw. Painting may be the second oldest form of art. Honestly, I have no clue. I was born in the 80s. However, paint mediums include oil, watercolors, tempera. Fun fact about tempera, it is paint made from egg yolk, acrylic, and gouache, which I had to look up, to be honest, and it is a combination of tempera, that egg yolk paint, and oil paints. Now, there are other mediums to paint that have been used over the years, such as coffee and actual human's blood. Sculpting is more of a three-dimensional style art. There are many sculptures around us every day, and there may be a misconception that these sculptures, to be distinguished as such, must be grand like Michelangelo's David, which I must say, if you have an opportunity to visit Italy to see this piece in person, do it. I cannot express the beauty of Michelangelo's work. Truly remarkable art piece. But a sculpture's medium can consist of Clay, bronze, marble, wood, objects, really any item that can be made into a three-dimensional piece of art, sand, ice, bone, plastic. These are all mediums of sculpting. You, the listener, you are a walking sculptor, a piece of art the world has never seen. Our clothes, makeup, glasses, underwear, these are all various forms of mediums to cover up our sculpture. They help define us. We are walking pieces of art. Lastly is digital art, also known as computer art or new media art. It refers to art made using software, computer, or an electronic device. Mediums include animation, photography, illustration, videos, podcasts, and others. This includes the digital JPEG that people call NFTs. Hey, I'm not knocking it. If you can flip a picture of some gorilla for a few million bucks to some suckers, go for it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I just look at NFTs the way I look at someone purchasing a star back in the 90s with their name on it. Go read how that industry ended. Okay, back to art. There are other types of art mediums, and the ones mentioned are just the most common that I'm aware of. In fact, I find this podcast straddling the digital art world with audio only. Podcasting is a medium, just like blogging is a medium or videography. But why is any of this important? Knowledge is power. Expand your knowledge as an artist and a person by experiencing and playing with different art mediums. I am constantly surprised by how quickly humans can pick up art or find a hidden talent. Finding a hidden talent could become a revenue generator. Etsy has a lot of great examples of entrepreneurs selling their art for a revenue. I have personally found that different art mediums allows me to see something differently. This looks good in color, but what does it look like in pencil? Paint? Clay, what if I spoke about it? What if I wrote about it? One of the biggest benefits I have found from exploring various art mediums is my expanding opportunities. This podcast is a medium I use, and it has allowed me to network and collaborate with so many individuals, from painters to shoe designers, digital marketers, hairstylists, the list goes on. This network expansion has only been possible because I began to explore a new art medium, podcasting. And that is why an entrepreneur should care. Experience art in various forms allows us to seek new events, meet new people, experience innovation at the crux of innovation. The human brain is a powerful tool, the best medium we have. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, experience with some new art mediums, meet new people, and create something beautiful. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show.
My next guest is a freelance cinematographer who has worked with the likes of Nike, Pendleton, Subaru, and more. With an eye for making business visions come to life for mass distribution, please welcome the owner of Against the Grain Media, Russ Bowen. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have a video production artist, Russ Bowen, which I'm really excited about because we've actually worked together before. Russ, what's going on, buddy? Howdy. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent, man. Man, I we've 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 worked together before in the past. I got to tell you, folks at home, this guy has some amazing, amazing video work. Really, really amazing stuff. I'm not. I'm Thank not you. just sitting here just because you're here in front of me. I really do enjoy it. But first, let's introduce the world to Russ Bowen. Who is Russ? Give us a little bit of background. Yeah. Well, I am 23 years old. Pretty young, young lad. Uh, I've been in the Oregon area for about five years now. Used to. I went. I came up to Oregon to go to college there for four years went to george fox university down in newburgh mm-hmm. then i moved up to oregon about a or up to portland about a year ago so i've been kind of just operating out of there since then nice now let's let's talk a little bit about your business against the grain production llc so for the folks at home what is it what do you do kind of give them a little background yeah so i just make fun videos man like I I always prefer to do um, like more narrative driven stuff, mm-hmm. but I also do like commercials, documentaries, um, like social content stuff like that, web website content, uh, like anything video related. I do it. Um, I'm currently working out of a studio up in Portland. Uh, got a little office up there and I mean my company is still pretty new like I've been operating just as a uh, I I think the term for it is just like a single operator person whatever sole proprietor yeah sole proprietor I was operating as one of those guys Um, and then I only just recently LLC'd so I've only been doing freelance work for about a year and a half now so let's let's get let's take a step back. You're 23. You now you've been doing sole proprietorship. Now you have an LLC. What got you started in this industry? Yeah, uh, I mean it all kind of goes back to just whenever I was growing up, um, like Super Bowl commercials, right? Oh yeah, great example. Love those. Things. Everybody loved. Super God Bowl damn those damn commercials. <laughs> so fucking Love good. them. I don't even watch the game anymore. Right. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, I just watched Super Bowl for the commercials. The Raiders Whatever. aren't playing. I ain't watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But growing up, I was the same way. Like my family weren't super into sports, but mm-hmm. we'd still watch the Super Bowl. And the commercials were always my favorite part. Yep. Um, and so pretty much ever since then, I was like, oh, okay, how can I make... Because Super Bowl commercials are on another level, right? I was like, how, I want to make stuff like that on another level still in like an advertising space, but also like making creative and fun to watch and view content. And then that eventually turned into me like leaning a little bit more into like story driven work. And then of course going to college, like I just kind of naturally picked up a lot of different interests and a lot of different things. So like, I produce all sorts of shorts and stuff like that with my friends. Um, I do a lot of work in the commercial sp- industry, and I I have done quite a few documentaries in my past. Like it, it's all it all just kind of naturally happens as you're kind of growing in that industry and learning about yourself and what you're in- into. So let's let's kind of talk. Did you go to school for um, film? Yeah. Yep. And so, how did you kind of start? to gather clientele like how did you market yourself Mm, uh it's funny i had this professor he he used to work for keen shoes actually uh professor's name was daniel heron i don't know if like 
can drop names on here. Yeah, drop names. Um, <laughs> We're all local. Yeah, totally. He's a super cool guy. He's, uh, he was teaching me graphic design at the time. Um, and But he was like, he had a successful time as a freelance designer. And so I was kind of just talking to him because I was like, I don't know if I want to do freelance or if I, I want to do in-house production or anything like that. I was kind of just like working out what I wanted to do after college. This is like my junior year in college. Mm. So I was kind of just looking forward. And so I was talking to him about it and he's like, well, try freelance for a little bit. Here's what I did. And so he told me he actually would just DM all sorts of companies just like on Instagram and just be like, Hey, I really like your work. Um, and really focusing on them being like, Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions about what you do? And all companies love to talk about themselves. So usually <laughs> they'd be like, Oh yeah, sure. Like come talk to me, whatever. And that's kind of how I made all these different connections, uh, with like producers and stuff like that in the area of just DMing them talking to them and then afterwards I'd email them and be like hey thank you so much for all your time like I really appreciate it if you have any work in the future like please reach out to me nice and just for the folks at home that might not be familiar what dming is right direct message direct message for those other folks that might be maybe I'm going to date myself here but that's also cold calling for those that are in sales, right? So you essentially kind of cold called your way. It's a very grassroots effort the way you yeah. kind of started. It's kind of like low stakes cold calling though because it's just texts. You yeah. Know? It's like you don't really hear anyone's voice until they make the effort to be like, okay, yeah, give me a call. It's a good point. FaceTime me, whatever. So it's kind of like a lower stakes uh, cold call. The rejections that. aren't as bad. Yeah, totally. If they're like, Oh, thanks for appreciating our work. Like, I don't have time. Stop messaging me. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I'll try the next person. Yeah, at least you got a response though, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. It's great. Sometimes people will answer the phone when a cold call and they'll give you the response and it's not a pretty one, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 made you decide? You you mentioned you recently went from the sole proprietorship to the LLC. What made you decide to go to LLC? Uh, I don't know. It, it was a few things. It, one of the biggest things was it kind of just felt like time. I was starting to grow like a few more clients and like getting a lot of consistent work. And so it kind of just came to the point of like professionalism. So like anytime I send somebody my invoice or whatever, I want Mm. like my invoice to say like to be a real production company as opposed to just me. Um, So that was one of them. And then also just there's the whole liability thing of. Yep. Very much so. Just trying to save my skin in case anything terrible happens, which luckily hasn't happened. But <laughs> if it does, uh, I won't lose my house. <laughs> yes, yes. And so for those folks at home, give them, give them kind of a little understanding for your from your perspective, what what you're meaning by that. What what do you mean yeah. by the LLC protection? Yeah. So the LLC protection essentially, like in its most basic sense, separates your personal assets from your business assets. So like. If something happens in my in my case, like if I'm on a job and I knock over somebody else's camera, they can sue my company and they can like essentially bankrupt my company. Like that's the worst that they can do. Mm-hmm. But I will still have all my own assets. So like I won't have to sell my couch in order to pay them off. Yes. Or anything like that. Yes. And that is that is very important for those you know individuals that are thinking of starting a small business or who have already started one selling a product, creating an LLC is just really a nice buffer for a legal buffer, you know, so they don't come after your car, as you mentioned, your car, your house, your couch kind of thing. So really, how did, how did the, uh, against the grain kind of concept, how did that, how did you create that? And how did that kind of come about? Dude, I was just trying to create like a catchy (laughs) name. I don't know, man. I, I like sat on it for a few days. And I think my girlfriend actually came up with it because I was like going thinking about like grains of film, like oh, taking it old school. Because nice. I also shoot a lot of film. Yeah. Yep. Um, she's like, ah, it sounds like you're a, like a farm grain it's company. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then that kind of just morphed into like against the grain. Like, I, I like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> just kind of, I can picture you right now as a farmer with like a little straw hat. I grew up on a farm. A, a, see, I, <laughs> see, maybe there is something to this against the gray. Maybe yeah. she wasn't too far off. So, so how do you still currently, as it is, you, you mentioned you, your business is kind of pretty consistent now, but I'm, I'm imagining you don't DM people anymore. How do you get new clients now? Is it all kind of word of mouth? It is. So especially in the Portland area, it's a very small kind of creative bubble. Um, there's like a lot of really great creative work, video work in the Portland area, but relatively to like Atlanta and LA, it's very small. So like technically I personally, I know like maybe three or four producers in the area. And so anytime they're like, Hey, I need a PA, I need a cameraman, I need whoever they just, I'm kind of in the Rolodex to reach out to. So that's kind of how I get all my work. Nice. Now I know you're only 23, but I don't want to assume, is this your first business? It is. What's, what's been kind of difficult about it? Uh, I'm just like so unsure about so many things. I'm terrified of fraud, Mm. like accidentally doing like some fraudulent business thing Mm. just because like, I don't know any better. Totally. It's my first business. Yep. And like, I grew up on all sorts of movies where it's like the, the, whoever government's coming after this business because they did some fraudulent thing and like, well, they were doing it on purpose, but like, what if I do it on accident? You know? Yeah. So a big struggle of mine has just been like asking people for help. It's like a big thing in my industry to just seem like, you know what you're doing and then you kind of work it out as you go. Um, But that doesn't necessarily work as well in just like as a business itself. So asking for help is always crucial, but it's definitely a struggle for me. What areas for folks listening at home? Right. We got some professionals listening at home. What areas of help do you need right now? Um, it's primarily just starting out stuff. Like I, like today, I literally just finished up talking with payroll mm. people. Yeah. Cause I just formed a, a business bank account. Yeah. And then just through that process, my bank was like, Hey, you need to get a payroll person if you want to pay yourself. And I'm like, what? I had yeah. no idea. Um, and so I just wrapped up payroll. So now I, I'm finally able to actually pay myself for my company, but it's just small things like taxes. Yeah. I, payroll taxes I'm and all so that, yeah. not looking forward to working out how to do taxes <laughs> whenever that time comes up. Um, and then like, because I was a sole proprietor, mm-hmm. I need to work out like how to also calculate that into my own, ta- into my taxes. Like I think I might actually end up having to file taxes three times this year. Oh, so, so it sounds like one for folks that are listening. Our boy Russ needs an accountant. Yeah. So, so if we got an accountant out there, one, two, a tax attorney, we need a good tax attorney. I think you're going to love a tax attorney. Trust me. Cause they're going to be able to find some great loopholes for you and be able to really help you out. Um, kind of depreciate items and kind of get you, get you on the right track. Right. And then for folks that are out there that also just really like, you know, I'm thinking of, of, you know, some of the folks like Rick Trozzi, if you're listening, I'm kind of thinking of you, buddy. If, if you know some folks that, you know, can get this guy kind of on the right track from like just how to build a small business, right? Into good golden nuggets that maybe I'm not unable to provide, right? So what, what do you feel has been easy about this process? Has there been anything easy? I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have been able to be successful at what I do for about a year before actually making the company itself. So that's something that is relatively easy for me at this point. It's just like running the company and like doing what our company does, my company does, Mm -hmm. has been relatively easy. It's all pretty much the same. I love being on set. It's like my favorite place to be. Um, And then also like separating my time from business. I know there's a lot of workaholics out there. Oh, yeah. I am not one of them. <laughs> I'm like, give me home, man. So. <laughs> I love it. Not everybody needs to be a workaholic. No um, way, man. I like my weekends. Heck yeah. Don't call me on Sunday, That's especially when about. the Raiders are playing. If you guys don't notice this, I'm a big Raiders fan yet. I'm not sure people are picking that up yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, you've, you're pretty new, right? You've only done it for a year. 
and you kind of already mentioned this, have you been feeling any like self doubt through this process about your business, about the success of it? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Every single time I'm like, mm, I end up having to do some door dashing this month or something like that. I, I, I haven't in a while, but it's, I'm kind of just in that state of limbo where it's like, I'm always kind of have that doubt in the back of my head of like, what if I don't end up getting enough work this month or, um, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> what if I just don't get up enough work, but my contacts always pull through. Super grateful for that. Love you guys. Um, yeah, it's like the biggest doubts that I ever have of just like money. Yeah. That's keeping, human. Keeping the bank yeah. loaded. Got to keep the lights on, right? You got to yeah. put food on the table kind of thing. And that, that's, that's, you know, what advice would you give even the younger self? Cause I know you're only 23 down. You haven't been doing this for too long. Right. But looking back at where you've been, would you change anything? Um, I mean, I don't think I'd change anything. I would change my mindset. Whenever I first started out, like, even just thinking about jobs, um, I was just all about security. Like, that mm. was my biggest thing. It's like, I worked at Starbucks for three years because it was secure and it was easy. Um, security's not everything, you know? It's like, yeah. I really love what I do now. I I, I didn't really enjoy working for Starbucks. It was just like, <laughs> it was just a whatever high school first job kind of thing. Totally. Um, but yeah, it was just all about security. It was like my number one worry. And a lot of that was ingrained from my dad who he was, he worked in the air force and now he does like contract um, government work with satellites and stuff like that. Um, so he's always like, got to get a good job. Got to get a, get a job with security, something mm -hmm. with a 401k, um, all that kind of stuff. But since forming the company, it's like, yes, I have all these doubts and worries about getting enough work, but like, that's not everything, you know? Yeah. How supportive have your parents been? Oh, they've been great. Like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they've been great relatively. Like every once in a while I'll come home and they're like, Oh, are you sure you're doing good? And I was like, yep, mm, I'm still making it, still doing pretty all right. So they're, they're very supportive. And I think they're just parenting, you know, Love it. just like being good, cautious parents. Love it. So what, what is your preferred work? So folks, you know, might be listening at home, future clients, right? Might be listening. What is your preferred, what is your kind of area ex of expertise? Well, my area of expertise is commercial work. So doing kind of product stuff or um, I really love doing like narrative commercial work, which is like a really fun mix between kind of documentary style stuff along with um, actual product mm -hmm. display. Um, but I love doing more narrative work. It's like okay. commercial work keeps the lights on and then more narrative work feeds my creative side of things. And what, what do you define narrative work? Narrative work being either something me or somebody else writes. And then we, um, it's driven by what was written as opposed to driven by a product or gotcha. the commercial. And, and typically more narrative work isn't aired anywhere other than like YouTube or Vimeo, something like that, unless you have really good people who can fest it or get it on, get it some airtime, something like that. Now, one of the things you just mentioned was YouTube. Yep. And one of the things you, I, I recall you kind of had the experience. In fact, we've had this discussion of, you know, doing the, uh, you know, Instagram reels and TikTok. Now, granted people at home, I'm not, I'm not on TikTok. I'm sorry. Gotta get on it, man. Yeah, man, you, <laughs> you and Cassidy keep telling me I need to get on it. Shout out to modern ally. Love those folks over there. Now give some folks at home, including myself, some tips. Like what, what do we need to be doing if we're going to record it? How do I go viral? Um, best way to go viral is produce something that is very, there's a few things to take into account there. It's like you have to take into account people's attention spans. 
So if you really want to go viral, something incredible needs to happen within the first five seconds, right? Something to really hold them in. Um, and then that incredible thing can be any sort of thing. It could be like learning something very valuable, learning or uh, something really funny, something very slapstick usually, um, or something in terms like some, something unusual. So those are like kind of the three typical ways to go viral. Um, and it's really hard to go viral unplanned. So it's like you need to have a sort of direction that you're going if you're ever to be like, okay, I'm going to produce this thing and I'm going to put it out there and I really hope people actually pick it up. It's got to be thought out. You know, it's, it, it's not, it's very rare for another Charlie bit my finger. You know, everybody right. follows it. Everybody loves it. Everybody, um, everybody knows it about it, but that, that one was a rare occurrence. Really? So most of you, so you're kind of saying most of the viral videos are very thought out and planned. Usually. Yeah. Interesting. No wonder I suck at this thing. Dude. <laughs> Thinking about any of this, I'm just trying to put out a video to get people to listen to this damn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! So, so for the folks at home that are interested in learning more about your items, learn learn more about your work. How can they? How can they find you? Well, I have a website, the grain against the grain dot com. Actually, I don't even think that's it's, what it is. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's so, up, the, the, the company is so new, ladies and gentlemen, that Russ is still trying to figure out what exactly is the website. Months old. Bro. He's over here searching through his phone, Lynch. I, I ain't going to lie. <laughs> he's, he's dying laughing, searching through his phone, trying to find out what his oh website is. I'm the freaking worst. <laughs> but he does have social media as well. So those, yes, are, I do. those are some social media handles. Um. Russ was what Russ Bowen Photography, I think it is. It's Russ K Bowen Media. Russ on K Instagram. Bowen. What's the K stand for? K of it's my middle name. Oh, that's a that's a very strong name. Thank you. Right, that's <laughs> I never heard that name before. It's Hawaiian. Oh, nice. Are you uh, from Hawaii? I was born in Hawaii. Nice. Yes. My family on my mom's side is Filipino. Nice. So, immigrated over to Hawaii, and got I was a. Uh, Lucky enough to get a very ethnic middle name. Yeah, do you ever go back? I've never been back. No, really. I left right before I turned one, mm. and I never went back. So you never really, you don't really kind of relate to it. No, I try to though. Like yeah. I, I cook a lot of Hawaiian foods. Oh, my I mom, love Hawaiian food. My mom makes Hawaiian food all the time. She oh. makes great Hawaiian food. Your mom can totally make some. Oh. Sp- she some like spam masubi or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh, delicious. Dude, that's that's, that's my go-to right there. Yeah. I Wajimaya right here in the Beaver Oh Channel. yeah! Oh man, it, it, folks at home, if you're not aware, <laughs> Wajimaya over here in Beaverton, some Saban Musubi. Oh my goodness, my mouth's watering just thinking mm. about it now. I'm gonna probably get the wife to go get some of that tonight. Oh, you like a duck? Man. <laughs> we've we've totally digressed. So again, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to buy time. So where where can they find you on social media? Uh, on Instagram, Russ K Bowen Media. That's pretty much it, man. Okay. I'm not big on social media right now. Yeah. Uh, my primary focus is like getting my website running, which like my website construction is horrible. <laughs> I don't, m- maybe that's another contact we can work through with yes. this podcast. Like somebody help me build my, build hey, my website. Cassidy, if you're listening, Modern Ally, we can get Cassidy on the phone. <laughs> She'll, what what are, you, are you on Bluehost? Dude, I don't know. I like went through, I built my website or not my website. I built my business through one of those websites. It's like, Hey, do everything. Oh yeah. Business here. Yeah. And I got my domain there. Yep. And they're like, Oh, build your website through us as well. I was like, okay, sure. Terrible decision. <laughs> that was an awful decision. <laughs> I really should have just like taken it from scratch because now I don't know what I'm doing. Yes. Anymore. Yeah. I will admit I'm going through the process of like trying to build my own website right now. I'm using Google sites, mm. which is pretty user friendly. Don't get me wrong, but like very limited on what you can do. Yeah. And so in fact, by the time this podcast episode will air, folks at home will already have been able to check out the new website. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's going to be well, rad, dude. And I'm excited for you, dude. We're <laughs> blowing up. The work we've already done too. I'm excited. That's true. Like we can't unfortunately talk about it on the air yet, but eventually we will. Okay. It's, it's a sweet project. Cool. 
I'm, I'm excited. Russ Bone. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.